the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus concludes this conversation that has been going on for the last, now the third week, with these words. We are intimately linked in the harvest work. Anyone who accepts what you do accepts me, the one who sent me, the one who sent you. Anyone who accepts what I do accepts my Father who sent me. Accepting a messenger of God is as good as being God's messenger. Accepting someone's help is as good as giving someone help. This is a large work I've called you into, but do not be overwhelmed by it. It is best to start small. Give a cup of cool water to someone who is thirsty, for instance. The smallest act of giving or receiving makes you a true apprentice. You won't lose out on a thing. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is a remarkably familiar gospel reading. These three short verses are hallmarks of hospitality and welcome. As I studied these verses, I was struck by the way Eugene Peterson translated the text. He circled back to the beginning of Jesus' conversation two weeks ago, reminding us that we are intimately linked to the harvest that Jesus has sent us to accomplish. A harvest which is the product of proclaiming good news, showing compassion, and offering hospitality. Jesus acknowledges he cannot do this work alone and needs help when he names and sends out the twelve. Likewise, we are interwoven as we listen, receive, and respond to Jesus' calling. I was also struck by the way that um, Eugene Peterson translated the Greek word dekomeno. More times than not, dekomeno is translated as welcome. While welcome is a great word, it has also been overused or misused. Many churches proclaim all are welcome only to have some realize once they have come inside how harmful or hostile the environment is for their body and spirit. Having the rainbow visible and being a reconciling in Christ congregation does not give us a free path on welcome. Instead, it calls us to be more intentional in our hospitality of all folks. Our actions matter. Our words matter. In honor of pride, today we are using Reconciling Works resources for our confession and forgiveness as well as our Eucharistic prayer. They are the folks on the ground paving the way, providing support and resources for full participation. One form of hospitality is being intentional with our language and action. We are nudged in these three verses to pay attention to how we receive, accept, and welcome others. We are reminded that even the smallest of actions can have incredible impact on someone's life. On June 3rd, more than a dozen folks from Creator joined over 1,000 area residents as they peacefully march from Clackamas High School to the Happy Valley City Hall. As folks rounded that corner on 132nd onto Sunnyside, they were met by creator folk handing out bottles of water and offering snacks. Our physical presence amid a pandemic, being socially distanced, was a simple act of hospitality. We literally lived out this calling by offering a cold drink 
to those who were thirsty. Thank you to those who participated, donated, and upheld this event in your own prayers from the safety of your residents. Professor Arthur Sutherland nudges us in his book, I Was a Stranger, a Christian Theology of Hospitality, to see hospitality at the center of what it means to be a Christian and to think theologically. He offers a challenging definition of hospitality and calls us to a practice that is the virtue by which the church stands or falls. Hospitality is not a one and done action. It is an ongoing practice. In our individualistic, rugged American experience, the daily practice of intentional hospitality can serve us well. One place I learned hospitality was through the sisters at Our Lady of Grace Monastery in Beach Grove, Indiana. Every visit is marked with unprecedented hospitality. Kathleen Norris, the author, who is also a Benedictine oblate, speaks to the Benedictine practice of hospitality in her book, Amazing Grace. She shares a conversation she had with a novice, which is the formal name for a beginner on the journey. Kathleen learned of a nun with Alzheimer's in the community who every day insists on being wheeled and having being placed in her wheelchair at the center. Okay. I was trying to say it by myself because I thought I memorized it. I'm going to read it because that just works better. So one of the sisters with Alzheimer's in the community who every day insists on being placed in her wheelchair at the entrance to the monastery's nursing home wing so she can greet everyone who comes in. The novice reflected, she is no longer certain what she is welcoming people to, but hospitality is so deeply ingrained in her that it has become her whole life. The rule of St. Benedict teaches all guests who present themselves are to be welcomed as Christ. A rule is akin to the scaffolding or the trellis of how we center our lives. It is the one thing we turn to time and time again for guidance, assurance, and wisdom. I see hospitality oozing out of the women who call Our Lady of Grace home. They are my teachers. A few pages later in Amazing Grace, Kathleen Norris shares, I read somewhere in an article on monastic spirituality that only people who are basically at home and at home in themselves can offer hospitality. Hospitality has a way of breaking through our insularity. Amid pandemic, scarcity, fear, isolation, rebellion, and uncertainty, these, three these last three weeks broke open the call to spiritual growth. For many of us, developing spiritual disciplines might seem an extreme concept in these times. In our isolation, loneliness, grief, and frustration, we can do simple acts of care and concern. Hospitality has to do with intention. On June 3rd, it was cool water at a peaceful march. Simple acts include sewing face masks, making a phone call, handwritten notes, and learning about white supremacy and systemic racism. I wonder how the words spoken two weeks ago have a different ring when you view them as an invitation to spiritual growth. I shared ways that compassion 
flows out of intentional spirituality. And I don't expect you to remember my exact words from two weeks ago, so I'll read it for you. I said, we show compassion by learning terms and history we have easily ignored. We cure the sick by admitting the harmful actions and restrictions we have placed upon indigenous cultures. We raise the dead by seeking justice and restoration for black and brown lives killed through disproportionate rates of incarceration, redlining, systemic poverty, and prejudiced hiring practices that perpetuate daily near-death existence. We cleanse the lepers when we name the injustices toward queer and transgender folk acknowledged these human beings have never been unclean. We cast out demons when we work at reducing our own biases and acknowledge where our privilege has excluded others. These are challenging actions. We cannot expect ourselves to do all of them at once. We can take small steps knowing they are invitations to grow deeper into relationship with God, ourselves, and our neighbors. There is no easy answer. There is no quick fix. This is hard stuff. There is too much that is unknown about our future. Many of us are sick and tired of being at home. I get it. Rather than lamenting on the past and longing for my, what might be, may I encourage us to be present in this moment. Regardless of our circumstance, we are always at home in relationship with Jesus. He encourages us to start small in offering hospitality. I'd like us to pause for a moment for you to consider one way each of us can offer hospitality this week. And if we were physically together, I'd invite you to turn and share it with a neighbor, someone sitting near you. And because we're not, and I know that heartache, because it's a heartache for me as well, I invite you to either write it down for yourself, or if you are courageous, to write that one way, that one action in the chat room, in the, in the group chat. I invite you to ask God to guide you and to open you and each one of us to the possibility of growth. 